Hi everyone, I'm Jesse. Great to be here. So yeah, I'm the founder of Provenance. We are a startup um, and in 2013 we were one of the first organizations to create a non-financial application on top of a blockchain. Um, so what does that really mean? Essentially, um, we are using this new technology to create uh, a method in which people can make their supply chains more transparent. And I'll tell you a bit more about that uh, later. Um, so I'm guessing everybody here has heard of blockchains. Yes, everyone? Great. I, told this was, I was told this is quite an educated audience. I wouldn't need to do too much explanation into what blockchains are, uh, but indeed talk a bit more about where the technology is going and how it might have a huge impact on our material world. Um, and there's been a lot of hype around blockchain tech, right? It seems like if you put anything on a blockchain, suddenly it increases in value. Uh, write blockchain in any blog post heading, shoop, straight up on the SEO. Um, and that isn't doing a huge favor for what is a, quite a nascent technology. We don't want to overhype it too soon. But I think what's really interesting is there is uh, a big um, revolution happening. Um, Mark Andreessen, the inventor of the web browser, said um, blockchain tech is the first thing like the internet since the internet. And indeed, blockchains are presenting a fundamental step change in the internet itself. This humongous, amazing, global data exchange that we probably take for granted every day is going through an evolution. And it's turning from just a big global data exchange into a big global value exchange. With Bitcoin came programmable money. Starting to use the internet, not just for exchanging data, but being able to fundamentally exchange value has humongous potential for our material world. How we understand it, how we model it, how we program it, how we transfer it, and most of all, how we could potentially create a race to the top, where the top is a sustainable future of materials and zero waste. So a bit more about provenance. Um, so we've got a simple vision in that we want every one day for every great product, whether it's a tennis shoe or a new type of technical material, uh, to come with information about who made it, where and from what. what. What is the history of this product? And we want to do that in an open way, through creating an open network on a blockchain, a commons. Uh, and why? Because we believe that making that information transparent so that all can understand it and capture it and find it out presents really huge new possibilities for understanding our material world, optimizing it for sustainability, but also help, help, helping to create a new kind of marketplace for materials that allows them to flow uh, much further into the future than they do today. So yeah, we use um, a blockchain to do this. Um, why? Um, because, well, kind of imagine a world in which there was a Facebook of material products, right? A big centralized authority controlling all of the information um, about our material things. Doesn't present a particularly rosy future. Do we want all of that information just to be held by one organization uh, where they're brokering all of the data? Or would we rather use uh, an open, decentralized method to hold and control that data where everyone is empowered to uh, decide what they do with their own data and how they exchange it? So yes, we use a blockchain. Uh, the Economist quote, the great chain of being sure about things. Essentially, uh, a shared global public ledger that allows us to exchange information uh, through the internet um, with some fantastic properties. Uh, a, a method that means you don't need to worry about the data being tampered with because it is immutable. Um, and it also gets rid of some of the problems the internet has presented us, like copy-paste, the ability to be able to duplicate data, which uh, has prevented us from creating an internet of value thus far. So Provenance has been using it in quite a simple way to date, which is just that we are taking information in at the top of a supply chain about a material, um, storing that in an in a easy to understand format inside a blockchain, um, and then hanging off data off that so you can start to uh, introduce bits of information that are relevant further down the supply chain, like maybe the origin, um, maybe something about the social and environmental impact. And then essentially what we do is create this virtual digital passport for that material thing. Uh, could be at a molecular level all the way down to an individual unique product level. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, but using a blockchain, you can exchange that material peer-to-peer -peer through a supply chain or any kind of value exchange network, um, knowing that you are preserving that record as it's exchanged. And that's how we've been applying the technology. So just to give you a bit of an example of this, um, oh, see if I can play this video. Maybe not. 
Oh no, sorry, there was a video, but maybe it won't play. That's fine, I'll explain. So how have we been applying the tech to date? So we've been mostly working in supply chains to make supply chains more transparent. So starting at source uh, with the material uh, and cascading these passports through a supply chain, um, mostly in the food and drinks industry, as this is where uh, the provenance of, of the product has been um, really a, a drive of value. But increasingly, we've been working in fashion um, and also furniture um, to create these digital passports to cascade through the supply chain. The, the main reason in which people are coming to work with us is really about um, increasing the, the brand value for their product. If, if how your product is created is uh, a fundamentally uh, great reason why someone should buy it, making it transparent through this method can, can help people understand that value um, and, and really uh, appreciate it easily at, at, at the point of sale by having access to that data. But we've been going beyond just looking at blockchains as a method to, to track products through supply chains. And indeed, we've seen that, that use case uh, used a lot. And, and people are talking about it quite readily on the internet. I'm sure you would have come across articles about that before. Um, and we're starting to move into thinking beyond just tracking products into, can we actually create a whole new type of value exchange or method uh, when it comes to our material world? And we've been exploring that a bit through, um, through our, our part of the CE100. We've been working uh, with another CE100 member, uh, DSM, um, on this kind of concept of material as currency. And that might seem like a bit of an outlandish idea, but actually, if you think about it, it's, it's kind of a perfect proxy. Um, a material thing has value. And if we model that in uh, a blockchain, sure, we can start to track the material, but can we also start to program the value uh, inside, a, uh, in, inside a blockchain? So this is a quote from just some of the work we've been doing with DSM, which is like using a blockchain, a material becomes like a currency um, because you know the value and you can see the full history. And essentially, you can use that material uh, in a digital way to program it and program its future as well as understand its past, which we have started to see the beginnings of, of course, through life cycle assessment, um, through people modeling supply chains. But doing that in a, in a blockchain presents this kind of whole new mechanism and way of, of, of modeling material. Um, so, yeah, we've been working with companies like DSM and, and, and others to, to really understand not only the implications for, for tracking and modeling materials um, on blockchains uh, through their, their creation, but also looking at what that means for their future. Um, if products are tracked on an open, decentralized network that we all have access to, uh, does that mean people can now start to discover materials that they can use to create into new things? Um, and could that really be the fundamental way of powering um, a circular economy? So this brings me on to something that's not spoken about maybe so much in the blockchain space, which is tokens. So what's really interesting about blockchains is not just their uh, ability to be able to um, create a value exchange through a network and track value peer to peer. Um, it's also about the way that the systems are incentivized. Um, and this is kind of something that people are looking at a bit and you you may have noticed that lots of people have realized this is a very good way to make a lot of money very quickly in the blockchain space, and that is by issuing a token for your application. Um, and essentially, many people are talking about tokens as if they're like the blood of, uh, of, a, of an application. So um, to give you a bit more of an understanding, essentially what tokens are doing are help completely aligning the goals of a network. So if you join Airbnb or Uber today, uh, sure, you may get value from it. And, and the beauty of uh, network effects is that the more that system is used, the more value we all gain, right? The more apartments are on Airbnb, the more Uber drivers there are around. But ultimately, there's a huge amount of value being created in that network that we aren't all part of. And that's the value that's gained by the shareholders of the system. And sure, maybe that was okay for a while. But as we're starting to create uh, huge networks of value, what we can do with a token is essentially align everything to mean that the whole system benefits. So rather than the shareholders just gaining most of the benefit from, from a system uh, in terms of the financial reward, through a token, what you introduce is a method in which we can all gain utility from a network, but also all benefit in the network's success by us all owning and having a part in the, the kind of blood of the system that makes the thing successful. 
And a lot of what we're looking at at Providence now is not just how we track products uh, through supply chains, how we use blockchains to measure impact, but how can we create essentially a, a market, a system, where these tokens are incentivizing sustainable behavior. Can we all benefit from the outcome of a, a system for our material world um, that is circular and sustainable? And I believe crypto economics, or essentially the design of tokens in blockchains, could be the absolute key to ensuring that we can do that and that we are all incentivized to do so. Thank you very much.